is Total War a strategy game? You might read the title and think the answer is obviously yes, and if that's the case, then this video is definitely for you. Total War has always been described as an RTS, a real-time strategy, but the problem with that is that absolutely none of the strategy in Total War happens in real time. All of the strategy is on the campaign map, which is turn-based. This is not an original observation that I'm making. Chris Taylor, the lead designer of Supreme Commander, pointed out that the term real-time strategy, coined by Westwood progenitor Brett Sperry, is actually largely a misnomer. As he said, although we call this genre real-time strategy, it should have been called real-time tactics with a dash of strategy thrown in. The real-time component of Total War is why everyone plays it, the battles, and the battles in Total War are about unit-on-unit -unit combat which the player has direct control over and for which awareness of tactical variables like terrain and individual unit properties and matchups are what the gameplay revolves around. The real-time component of Total War is entirely tactical, and just like other games, where the player has direct control over their units, Total War is functioning as a real-time tactics game. The part of the game that everyone plays Total War for is real-time tactics. If you're still not sure about what the distinction between tactics and strategy is, I'll refer to Sun Tzu. The same Sun Tzu whose Art of War inspired Total War in the first place, and which was referenced all throughout Shogun 1, the original Total War in 2000. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. Sub 2. What this means is that top level long term direction that is prudent and sensible cannot produce victory on its own, is not sufficient. Strategic prudence alone is insufficient, while there's also the requirement of success on the front lines and the relatively microscopic engagements that constitute the actual resolution of conflict. Likewise, aimless and undirected tactical prowess will produce localised small-scale successes and engagements that do not effectively contribute towards ultimate victory. Tactical prowess is also insufficient for victory when the successes that it produces do not accumulate towards the achievement of clear objectives. To parse it out, having a long-term plan that is sensible and encompasses properly the overall situation will not achieve victory without success on the battlefield when actual engagement begins. At the same time, all the military might in the world is impotent when not directed in a manner that considers for real objectives and long-term goals. Both are necessary, but neither alone is sufficient. Victory is caused by effective tactics directed by sensible strategy. And Total War acknowledges this. The turn-based campaign map produces the specific engagements. The real-time battle map is where the engagements unfold and their outcome determines the slow tug of war on the campaign map. In this sense, the turn-based campaign map is the strategy map of Total War. The real-time battle map of Total War is the tactical map. What we've done is uh, created a tactical map. It's been something we've wanted to put in the game for quite a few titles now, but it's never quite been right. So some people might think that putting a tactical map into the game may make it too easy. You can't actually control units from that level. Uh, it's very much a tactical overview. It's really a, a great orientation tool. Um, and it's something that the players have been you know, crying out for for years and we're finally delivering it. The tactical map really helps you keep track of where things are, uh, where you are, where the enemy is. I remember in 2013 watching Reynolds Sanity's video critiquing Rome 2 and hearing him complain about the name of the tactical map 
on the grounds that it's not actually tactical. It's more strategic because you can't manage your units individually and tactically. Hold up, look at this wonderful UI feature. Simply press tab and go into this tactical map. Wow. Just drink in the majesty of it. So what's wrong with it? Well, first of all, it's misnamed. Strategy is your overall plan. Tactics are the decisions you make to achieve it. So seeing the entire battlefield is more of a strategic map. Oh yeah, and it's fucking pointless. You can't right click and drag, you can't see formations, you can't give attack orders, you can barely understand terrain in it. In a word, it's worthless. The tactical map in Rome 2 was an attempt to remind people of those battle diagrams everyone read in their history books. The problem is that the unit blocks in it are a mess, so you can't discover any useful information from it, and you can't issue any helpful commands in it. The map reminds me of Supreme Commanders. In that game you could zoom down to the individual units, then zoom out to a satellite view to see the entire theatre of war. The difference is that Subcom's map was actually useful when zoomed out, and you could stop at any height you wanted. You could issue every order you could at ground level too. Instead of a toggleable mode, it should have been just one uninterrupted zoom, from the grunts to the diagram. The diagram itself needed to be less of an autistic mess. The rectangles for the unit should correspond exactly to their size and position, and the unit bar should still be showing up at the bottom. It should be used to issue orders for entire armies. Say I want to set up one long pike line. Lastly, it should be a topographic map, so I can see the terrain features. It should be a tool for planning and grand strategic manoeuvres, not a gimmick. He's definitely got a point here. The tactical map is above the normal gameplay, which was already tactical, literally and metaphorically above in terms of the scale of conflict. Minor tactics, tactics, grand tactics, operations, minor strategy, strategy, grand strategy, there's a spectrum. As an aside, I remember thinking for number 15 of my Impossible Battle series that I was no longer directing my units tactically in the conventional Total War battle manner, but as whole groups with an assumed performance along the lines of a game like Supreme Commander, and I remained effective. This is along the lines of what stepping up from tactics would resemble, and what a properly operational map would permit and facilitate the more effective execution of. If the tactical map is not more tactical than the eminently tactical interface of normal gameplay, then it's completely misnomeric to describe it as tactical. It's a grand tactics map or an operational map. It is a step up. If you're not able to properly direct your units with tactical awareness, and you're definitely not, then it's just not tactical. With respect to the normal gameplay that it's being compared with, it is less tactical. Likewise, if Total War games decide to reduce the importance of tactical elements like height advantage and flanking, and instead introduce new mechanics like heroes, that can dominate the battlefield without any regard for actual tactics and instead rely on magical activated abilities and unrecognisable properties that inevitably produce very bizarre emergent gameplay, then is Total War even a real-time tactics game anymore? Isn't it shedding its claim to its high place in the real-time tactics genre and becoming something altogether different. It's not a real-time tactics, it's not a real-time strategy, it's not even a MOBA, it's something else altogether. I don't know what it is, it's amorphous and it's weird. Whatever it is, it isn't the Total War that was conceived in the first place as an inspiring and novel simulation of the large-scale battles of history that we all grew up reading about and imagining and being inspired by, that is gone.
I have a Patreon page for if you like the videos enough to want to support their production. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington, The Rode 451, Halcyon, William Ballangari, and Robert Sparks. <laughs>